In this video, we're going to be checking out a few exponential functions, and we need to call out all the key features. Some of these key features are going to be the y-intercept, domain, range, whether or not it's increasing or decreasing, and then we'll also do the end behavior. And to help us out with all this, I'm going to go to desmos.com and use that graphing calculator to graph these functions. And as you can see, I have the functions already entered in here. I'm going to go ahead and make this first one live. And the first key feature we want to find were the, uh, or was the uh, y-intercept. So we need to figure out where on this graph does it cross the y-axis. So uh, I can move my cursor here, and we could notice that right there it crosses the y-axis. So my y-intercept is going to be 0, 1. I'll go ahead and put that right here, 0, 1. And I want to find my domain. So the domain represents the range of inputs or x values on this graph. So the lowest possible input we could have here as we move to the left or as our x values decrease. Right now you can see the x is negative 1.91. As that number gets lower and lower and lower, you could see that it keeps going and that's going to be towards uh, negative infinity. So that's going to be like the, the low boundary. Uh, as we increase the x value, right now it's at negative 4.88. We move to the right and get higher and higher and higher. It's going to get positive there, and then it's going to continue on forever to the right. Uh, that's going to be positive infinity for the x value. So it's going to be all real numbers. We could write that in here as negative infinity, comma, positive and infinity, and then we always use parentheses with the infinity symbols. Now for range, and uh, range is going to be looking for the range of all the possible outputs or y values. So the lowest possible uh, output is going to be, uh, right here is 0.66, right? So watch that number. As we uh, move this way, my y values are getting lower. They're getting closer and closer to zero, but they never actually touch zero. Right now it's at 0 0.025. Um, it's just going to keep getting lower and lower and lower. It's going to approach zero, but it never gets to it. And as we increase the y values, means we move our x values larger and larger and larger to the right, um, my y values are going to go all the way towards positive infinity. So right now y is at 4.17. We could keep that, moving that to the right, and it's going to get higher and higher. So for the range, the lower boundary was at 0. And then it kept increasing all the way to positive infinity. We're going to use parentheses there. And we're going to also use parentheses with the 0 because it never actually touches 0. If it did, then we use brackets. But it didn't, so we would just write parentheses. Now, is this uh, exponential function increasing or decreasing? Well, uh, as we go from the left to the right, so as our x values increase, we know that our y values are all increasing as well. So we would call this exponential function uh, a growth, or it's increasing. And then lastly, end behavior. Um, as the x values approach negative infinity, or as the graph moves to the left, uh, what is uh, f of x doing, or what are our y values doing? So going back to my graph here, as x values approach negative infinity, as they get lower and lower and lower, the y values are approaching 0. and then as we move to the right, as x values are approaching positive infinity, my y values are going all the way up to positive infinity. So I'll write those answers here. It's going to be 0 and positive infinity. So you can see that the end behavior kind of reflects the range. Okay, now we're going to do that same thing with b, c, and d. Going back to Desmos, I'm going to make this graph live. So this is going to be part b, and that's the blue one. So now let's compare that to the red one, the first one we did. As you can see, it crosses the y-axis at the same time, uh, or at the same point, so the y-intercept is going to be 0, 1 again. And if we follow along on the blue graph, we go all the way to the left, so my y values, I'm sorry, my x values are decreasing. And as we go to the right, my, my x values are increasing to positive infinity, so the domain's going to be the same, uh, negative infinity to positive infinity, or all real numbers. And the range is also going to be the same, because if you highlight it again, you can see that the y values are slowly going down, and they're going to approach 0, but they're never going to get there. And then as we go this way, the y values are increasing, and it's going to increase all the way to positive infinity. So the range is going to be the same as well, and that means the end behavior will be the same. 
So there's all the key features. They're identical to part A. And if you're wondering, well, what's the difference between them? Well, look at them closely. The, the rate at which it increases is a little different. And the only different thing in the equations are the base. Here you have a base of 2. Here you have a, a smaller base of 1.5. So you can see how that changes in that curve of the graph. So I'm going to now make part C alive. So that's y equals 3 to the negative x power. That's going to be this green curve. And once you again, you can see that the, the curve goes through the y-axis at a value of y equals 1. So that y-intercept is going to be the same. Um, now we have to do the uh, domain, right? So um, what's my lowest uh, input or my x value? As we move this way, you can see that it, it gets lower and lower and lower. Um, so right here, for example, x is negative 1.381, and we can make that number even smaller and smaller. It's going to go to negative infinity, and then as we move to the right, it's going to increase forever. So we could say that that's going to be positive infinity. So the domain's going to be the same as the red one and the blue one. Uh, the range, well, what's my lowest y value? Right now, my y value is at 0.106 and I can make it lower and lower and lower, closer to zero, but just like the blue and the red, it never touches zero. It's going to approach it, but it never gets to it. So that's going to be the lowest, uh, the boundary, or I, I should say the, the low boundary, and then as we go this way, the, the y values increase forever. So that's going to be um, a high boundary of positive infinity. So it goes from zero to positive infinity, just like the red and the blue one. And remember, the end behavior is going to reflect the range, so it's the same. So here are the key features at this point. We have the y-intercept of 0, 1, and then I've also written the domain and the range. Now we have to figure out if it's increasing or decreasing. So I'm going to go back to my graph, and as my x values increase on my green curve here, you could see that the uh, y values are decreasing. So it's not going to be increasing, it's going to be a decreasing function or a decay. So I'm going to go ahead and circle decreasing. And now for the end behavior. The first question we have to ask is what are the y values doing as x approaches negative infinity? So as the x values are approaching negative infinity or getting smaller, you can see that the y values are increasing right here, right? The y at this point is 1.918 and as we move farther to the left, it's increasing to 2, and it'll go up to 3, and 4, and so on. So it's positive infinity. So I'll go ahead and write that in here. And then we want to figure out what f of x, or y, is doing as x is approach positive infinity. So as my x values are getting higher and higher and higher towards positive infinity, you can see that the y values are getting lower and lower and lower, but they are going to bottom out at about 0. They're not going to actually touch 0. Uh, right now it's at 0 0.012, but it's never going to actually get to 0. So I'm going to uh, put a 0 down here. And on to my last one, Part D. I'll go ahead and make Part D live. So now Part D is going to be the purple one. We have y equals 0 0.25 to the x power. And just like my previous three, uh, the purple curve is going to go through the same y-intercept at 0, 1. Um, and if I highlight my purple graph here, you could see that the x values will go lower and lower and lower to negative infinity. And they're also going to get higher and higher and higher to positive infinity. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. Uh, for the range, though, um, as we move this way, the y values get lower and lower. Again, like the previous ones, they approach 0, but they never get to it. So that's going to be the bottom part of the range. And then as we make the y values larger, you can see that they're going to go up forever to positive infinity. So all of those key features are the same as all of these. Now let's see if it's increasing or decreasing. Going back, uh, you can see it's got a similar path to the green one. So as my x values increase, you can see the y values are going lower. They're decreasing, so this function is going to be decreasing. I'll go ahead and circle that. And then on to end behavior. As the x values approach negative infinity, or as my graph moves to the left, 
I'm highlighting my purple one here, you could see that the y values are approaching positive infinity. And then as x values approach positive infinity, or as we move to the right, the y values are approaching 0, but they never get to it. So as we go to the left, it's going to go to negative infinity, I'm sorry, positive infinity, and as we move to the right, it's going to 0. So as we move to the left, it's positive infinity, as we move to the right, it's going to be 0, just like this end behavior right here. Now if you compare all these exponential functions, you could clearly see that the y-intercepts are all the same. And if you're thinking, wait, how can that be? Well, what happens when we have a y-intercept? Well, that means that our x value, I'll go back to the graph here, my x value is always going to be 0. Any point that a curve crosses the y-axis, my x value has to be 0. And if you plug in 0 for each of these x values that were in the exponents, you're going to get 1 as a y value because any base number raised to the 0 power is 1. So unless we're adding something on the outside here, subtracting something to make that exponent not 0 and that base to just not be the base, then our y-intercepts are all going to be at 1. Another thing that we could take away from this is that exponential uh, functions will always have uh, a domain of all real numbers, but the range is going to be a little bit different. And then we're going to have increasing or decreasing, and then usually the, the range is going to um, reflect the end behavior.